I'm Harold Meyerson. I'm the executive editor of the American Prospect, and we move on to our. Uh, my mother is here today, and we uh, move on to our next panel on how conservatives fail economics. So I want to make two quick comments about things said in the last panel. The first on where was the reaction to Katrina? It was the election, and I mean that in a narrow sense as well as a broad sense. Uh, I had lunch uh, in his uh, Senate office two weeks ago with uh, Jim Webb, the man who tipped the Senate uh, with some help from George Allen. And Jim Webb said, well, what really made me decide to run was Katrina. Uh, and uh, I, I don't think we can overstate the effect of Katrina uh, on American politics. It's ongoing. We'll see where it goes. Uh, secondly, Beth Shulman did make uh, a comment about the strain that uh, working parents are under and that some were unable even to attend their kids high school and college graduations and a tear welled in my eye as I thought of the plight of poor Rudy Giuliani who was unable to uh, make it to his son's high school graduation embodiment as he is of the fam of the party of family values anyway onward uh, uh, in discussing the economy uh, and uh, conservatism's role in creating what we have today. I'm reminded of the Yates line, who can tell the dancer from the dance? Uh, the undoing of the economy in which I was fortunate enough to grow up, uh, economy of broadly shared prosperity, uh, is a function of very deep changes in, uh, in the economy as such, but changes that uh, were encouraged uh, were permitted uh, by an increasingly conservative uh, political hegemony uh, that has helped create an America in which prosperity is basically, uh, and productivity gains basically, uh, all going to the wealthiest 5% uh, or so uh, of Americans. And this land of broadly shared prosperity and the home of the first uh, majority sort of middle class in world history uh, is, is struggling to uh, regain its, its footing. We have four uh, very excellent panelists to talk about different aspects of how conservatives fail economics over the next, uh, over the next hour. Um, they are William Spriggs, who is the uh, chairman of the economics department at Howard University, uh, distinguished career with, uh, with the Urban League, works with the Economic Policy Institute. Uh, we're very glad to have him here today. Uh, Tamara Drought, who explains why my fully employed daughter, age 25 in San Francisco, nonetheless still calls her father uh, for uh, supplemental income. Uh, uh, Tamara is the author of Strapped, Why America's 20 and 30-somethings 20 and 30 Can't Get Ahead, uh, and she is with uh, the Demos uh, Foundation Entity Institute, whatever Demos is, uh, in, uh, uh, in New York. Uh, uh, Michelle Cicciarelli, Cicci Ciccarelli, thank you, okay, uh, who is a partner in the Lorac Coughlin uh, Law Firm uh, and who is currently uh, representing victims in uh, the Enron fraud case and has done a great deal of work in class action suits uh, representing uh, uh, victims of security fraud, consumers, workers, and others who have been at the mercy of the worst tendencies of corporate America. And uh, finally, uh, Jacob Hacker, uh, who has, so far as I know, the only endowed associate professor position I've, uh, I've seen. Uh, uh, Jacob is a professor of political science at Yale uh, University, uh, author of several remarkable books, uh, the latest being The Great Risk Shift, which uh, looks at the uh, phenomenon of the fact that without ever having voted on it, the American public seems to have assumed uh, all, all the risk uh, uh, that once upon a time corporations and governments felt somewhat compelled to help them with. So uh, in, uh, let's just proceed from my left to my right and begin with Bill Spriggs. <laughs> 